Right, well, I'm just coming to see Margaret Chamberlain and see how she does her drawing for the books that she illustrates. Um, and it's a lovely approach. We come through the garden. I've parked at the end. Come through the garden, and this is her studio. Um, and I'm going to go up the steps and, and go in and see her. She's, she works on the top floor, and I believe she has fabulous views, so I'm looking forward to seeing Margaret's her. Margaret's studio. Oh, hi, hi Marg. Hello, Tessa. Hi, it's really sweet it's of you to let me come here, and see you. It? <laughs> well, it's gorgeous, but look at your view. Fabulous. I know. It's How can you do any work? Not many people have got a view like this. No. No, I know. Well, the thing is, once you've seen the view... <laughs> You, you look at it every morning, but I can't spend all day looking at it. And I have my back to it. We come and see you in your studio today. That's um, all right. It's a rare opportunity. Well, I've always loved your drawings, and so it's really nice to be able to see what you do and, and, and how you do them. was inky. Well, that's amazing, because I wouldn't expect people to be... Is that a pen and ink yeah, you're using? Yeah, it's actually old-fashioned quink ink with nice, smooth paper, so it gets... Um, it's quick because I like drawing quickly and some paper has got too much rough texture so it catches the pen in it so this is like they always say it's very um I can't remember what they said about thinking but it's it's very fluid so it's yeah. good for my I'm dynamic fast drawings oh no well I'm, not, I'm surprised you can still get it but anyway it's it's yeah. um, oh. do you use other colors or just black no I use black um, because I scan it in the right. drawing into oh, the computer okay. and then I colour it in on the computer. Ah. In the olden days I used to use this ink and then put watercolour on it and water on top of quink ink used to make the colours separate out. And was that so a good or a bad thing? It was, or was good. It, difficult? it was quite good because it made it sort of messy and again ah. quite spontaneous and smudgy. But sometimes it was a bit irritating but, but I don't have that problem now because I scan it in and I'm, so it's sort of fixed. So when was the first book, that, which was the first book you did on the computer? So I presume your earlier ones would have that slight style to them then? Would yeah, well, it's, it's a very good question because the first book I did on the, on the computer was the fourth of a series. So I'd already done three in Real Materials and I did the fourth one to try and match. And it was the first time I'd used the computer and I did the artwork, and the people didn't even realise I'd done it on the computer because it matched so well. So it's you, amazing. You, you smudged it. Yeah, I did the whole on the, thing, the whole way of working. I was able to replicate. Really? Yeah, and so they never did know to this day. And do you still use that style, or have you gone into no? A I've more used sharp. I'll show you because what bit. I do with this quite a bold line like that. Yeah. And. I've actually got a book here that's done in that sort of bold line. So I'll show you. You can probably see how that bold line turns into that. Yes. And do you rub out some of the line? Do you decide when it's on the computer yeah. and maybe it needs to be thinner or thicker? So or sometimes something? I do, yeah. And, and what do you, I use a tablet for it. Yeah, um, I use a right. tablet, okay. which is this. Mm -hmm. And a stylus, which is this. Mm. And Golly. I mean, th this is obviously a, a completely different style. It's not trying to look like watercolour. Right. It's trying to look like a print, like a silkscreen print. Right. And with working on a computer, it's quite interesting to experiment with the colours. So, you know, keeping a a limited palette is quite good fun. But if I was working in real materials, I probably wouldn't have done that. I would have thought, well, like that. I would never I would have thought of, let's have a yellow sky. So what are you working on at the moment, Marg? Oh. Oh, well, I've been doing a lot of cats, like these ones I was showing you, these cats. I've got loads of them because I've been, I've written an ABC of cats. And do you have lots of drawings of cats here? In yeah, the, yeah, I've got elsewhere in the studio. All, Here's all the drawings I've done. Oh. Actually, do hundreds. These are sort of rough drawings because I've written it, and um, because I'm now uh, writing and illustrating my own things because I've been doing a few eye books. So I did the first one I did was the ABC of dogs because oh. dogs there's such a lot of scope with dogs. Dogs, so I thought I could do 
easily write 26 little things about dogs, different letter. And you still draw on the paper first? Yes, I draw on the paper first. Um, seems how you've come in and you're looking. Would you like me to draw you a dog? Yeah, I'd love you to do it. Well, could, I, you couldn't do a poodle, could you? Because I've got poodles. I love drawing oh, poodles. Thank you, that'd be great. In fact, they're my favourite things to draw because they're so funny because they have this long face with a snooty nose and it goes up like that. I did do one in the book. It was a haughty, haughty dog. And it had a... So they're, they're very elegant and they've got this... Actually, I've given it rather a big mouth. Never mind, I can change it. It's a grinning poodle. It's a laughing poodle. I have to... So a whole story about a laughing poodle. Happy poodle. Happy. It's happy. It's because it's got such a lovely owner. So they have a big bow and they have... This is a special poodle that's been primped up. So it's got long eyelashes. And they have these funny ears with curly sort of pom-poms on. And the thing about poodles is very elegant. They have this long, 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 long neck. And that's always trimmed short. Looks sort of quizzical, smiling. And then they have a lot... Underneath, they have a thin body, but their, their fur is sort of left woolly on their body, I think. Some of them have a sort of like a... Bolero bit, and then they have this long bare bit, this short. And then they have a tail that's got pom pom on the tail. I don't know why. Why it's been designed. They can. So that's this lot is short. This is sort of short wool, and this is fluffy wool. And they have a funny sort of thin body. It's a bare, bare bottom. They're, 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 it's funny. And so they have long, high-stepping legs. Very elegant. And I think they sometimes have a fluffy bit on their ankles. Did you look at a lot of dogs while you... I mean, do you look at animals when before you well, draw them? Or do you just kind of have have an image in your mind? Well, if it's something use? particular, like a poodle, that has got to be right, I would. But the good thing about dogs is you can get get away with anything because... There's, they call it 57 varieties. You can have a dog that looks like a table and it still looks like a dog. Oh, right, sort of okay. short legs. Like this one looks completely wrong. Now I've done it, I realise the head is miles too big. Well, never mind. It's and its legs are too... But you okay. see, this is the joy of a computer. I can scan that in and make it look okay. I make it... Oh, right. Okay. Make its legs so it's Okay, wrong. well, let's... Um, not to worry. That why don't we um anyway, you can how, see how do you I do transfer it. it in the computer and, and okay. how does it work on the computer? Okay, or have I'll, you got one that you've already you No, I'll I'll some scan this there. in and I'll show oh, okay. I'll come back in a minute, I'll show oh, you okay. scanned in. Great. Okay. Thanks. I'll go and have a coffee. Okay, good. You've just scanned that drawing that you did earlier on into your scanner yeah. and so it's I mean, now here. on the computer. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's actually paper. I'd say that poodle looks fantastic. Oh well the thing is it its legs are too long and things like that. I think its head's too big. So I think the main thing is I'm going to make its head smaller and, and I'll just do that before we start colouring it in. So you can see I can just isolate that and make it smaller. Probably about wow. like that, I should think. Its neck might be a bit long as well. Like oh, that? That's probably about right. So, Brilliant. so... Um, Poodle, they're white. Well, you so, can get apricot ones if you, for the purposes of colouring in and demonstration. You can pretend I've got an apricot one and maybe change it to white later. But okay, how so you that so in, what's uh, apricot? That yeah, colour. Yeah. Okay. So that look a bit a bit like flesh, isn't it? Flesh coloured. So I'm choosing a brush now. So it's like that. And I'm so this is. Is that about the right colour? Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. So you can see mm -hmm. it's very quick to colour it in. Well, you're obviously very good at colouring in. Well, I'm going over Did the edges a bit. Oh yes, of course I went to college. I'm all. I've been. I went to college for seven whole years. I was at art schools probably about as long as I was at 
a normal and school. And you learnt to colour in like that? I learnt to colour in over the edges. Okay. Well, this is being arty. Ah, OK. So I think okay, a poodle like that would probably have a different coloured bow. I so, think it would have so a red bow. So are you bow. going to fill in those white bits? Could you if you wanted? I mean, I think it looks quite attractive, but I mean, could you if you oh, wanted? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I, I think probably I would introduce another shade. I would bring... Yeah. I would make it a little bit... Um, Maybe to introduce a little bit of texture. Mm -hmm. And one of the brushes I really like is this one that's like a furry brush. That, that one. Ah, oh. oh, so it's, um, make it thinner. You go over and make it poodle texture. Oh. Can you see? It's yes. sort of um, furry. Really and just... Just a little subtle bit of that. So do you you can use that on any colour? If yeah, you did it in yeah. the same colour, would it look uh, would it show or not? Ah. So that's the ground. And if I want to make it a slightly more fluffy, I'll mm -hmm. probably go and get actually its tail is very big. I think its tail needs to be small. What do you think? Probably a little bit smaller. Maybe a bit thinner. Yeah, yeah. so that's it's on a different layer. A bit thinner. Except they don't dock poodles' tails now, so. Don't they? No. That probably looks better. Yeah, that's better, yeah. Okay. Yes, so that is better. Select, so that one's on a different layer. So I'm going to rub that bit out. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time to rub it out because it's a bit thin. But okay. anyway, you, yes. you get the yes. idea. So yes. there, there I am. Fantastic. With and okay, can we have another colour bow just to show how easy it is to oh, yes. change what, it? What colour? Blue. blue bow. Okay, so choose a nice blue there. Okay. Then I get the paint bucket mm -hmm. and just go like that. Blue. Oh. Fantastic. And, that, and that's when you were talking earlier on about being able to change the colour in your books on the computer. You can just change it. Yeah, just like that. Yeah, it's it's That's great so fun, easier. and the thing that is very much fun, I find, is changing the background. So mm. let's see what happens if I fill background. Oh, oh the whites. Well, so then you think, oh, we need some white. So I might just put some white on top. Um, the furry white. Should we have the furry yeah. white? bit furry and fluffy. Oh, that's fabulous. Fluff, 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 fluff. Make it a bit more whitey. And maybe a bit more on the tail. Yes, it's like uh, cotton wool. Yes. And high, the, high, and step, high stepping. I think that's pretty beautiful. Poodle, pretty poodle. So that's what you do for all your drawings then, basically? Yes, yeah, so this is what I've been doing for my iPad. Shall I show you how they come out when you've got an iPad? Yes, that would be great. You can see the story. Yes. Okay, some of them are books that were originally books. Um, and I've converted it as to making it into an iPad. Mm -hmm. But some of them are originals for just done for the iPad. So um, it's a good opportunity of, of doing my own thing mm. without a publisher involved so it means I can do exactly what I like. And do you enjoy it or is it work for you? I enjoy it actually. It's it's working in a different medium is good fun. So you do it in paper and then it's in here with sound as well is good. And I just think it's magic doing that and it makes the pages turn over. <laughs> I still love doing that. <laughs> Um, um, would you go a, back to real art, or do you like working as, in the computers now, or is it just um, functional for you? I mean, you enjoy it, but it's functional in the computer. No, I prefer it in the computer. The thing about the computer is you get such lovely glowing colours, which are very hard to get in real materials, because mm. so, you get the light shining through it, so that's really nice. Right, okay. And will you be selling any prints? Do you sell your prints? Um, yeah, I do sell my prints. Yeah, I mean, you can mm. get very good prints nowadays, so they're all available on the website.